The Club Random merch line is up and ready to go. Get your Club Random t-shirts, hats, hoodies, and glassware at clubrandom.com. I was screaming at your podcast. Thank you, James Carville, for speaking for all black men and why they're all of a sudden conservative. Are you kidding me? You know what? Watch hockey with Donald Trump. I don't care. I I don't think Donald Trump watches hockey. No, but you do, and that's great. Don't sit down. I'm coming. Hello. (laughs) I'm admiring... Kanye over here, or what do you call him no, now? Isn't that an awesome painting? Do you just say yay? Great to meet you. Hi, How you so doing? So nice to meet you. You look fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, was a gift from one of my writers. Oh, my that gosh. That is so funny. I mean. At first I was like white, and then I saw it's every Kardashian. And all I mean, of them. Like, you know. Look at her abs. That's not fair. Well, it's a painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fake, for sure. Hello. So, thank you for doing this. I oh know. gosh, thank you. I think you're... Just here for this, or you're on Just a... Just for you. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> the Republican debate is here in California tonight, so you go... <laughs> finish here, I'll finish quick. No. Oh, we can, like, drive up to the Reagan no, thank Library. You. Oh, my God, no? no, thank you. You don't want to go to the Reagan you know Library? What? I went... I actually Summer. would. actually would, would do that, but not with the debate there. I went to the... Um, I went to the debate in Milwaukee. Which one? The one that we just had? Yeah. Why? Random, because a friend of a friend... I live in Connecticut. A friend of a friend um, was going, and I had just left ESPN. And he's like, hey, you don't have to work. No excuse. I have a plane. Let's go. And I wow. thought, you know what? Because I, I've always wanted to, yeah. as a journalist, hey, it's a wanted sport. to see it. Totally. But one of the things I thought was so cool, um, like the body language, when the oh. camera's not on them. And that's what I, I actually really that's interesting. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is, especially that debate is a sport because it's only pointless to the extreme because Trump is not there. Exactly. So the, the actual candidate who's going to win the thing, who's going to, in other words, the team that's going to win the Super Bowl is not there. Totally. <laughs> and, yeah. and then, so these guys are just, I mean, I watched it too. I don't know if I can watch the, the one tonight, but, you know, they it's just about scoring points. It is. It's, it's just like sports. And... Boy, they the way they do it, I mean, some of them are so clumsy. I mean, they they're just not performers. They're they're you know, politics is the only job you can really get in America with no skills. You don't have to have <laughs> any nothing has to really I know. Almost everything else you do, you have to know something to operate the tilt a whirl. But politics, you can as long as you have a clip on tie. No, it's a good point. You're right. Smile, you, no, and you can't. You know, there's no uh, nobody ever calls you in and say, "Here's your performance review," except the voters. But you know, you can fool them. I saw when you had Vivek on. <laughs> that here, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> in this chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my. Oh, I know. Oh my, um, because that was right before that Milwaukee debate, I think. But he's charming. Oh, he's. He's one of those scary, brilliant guys. Yeah. Yeah. I said to him, I find you disarming and alarming. <laughs> I thought that, did you plan that line? No. <laughs> I have to plan. Does any here look planned? <laughs> it was, um, but you, you, um, th- first of all, you're you, and you just came at him mm-hmm. with legit questions. And again, body language and watching him, he always has that big smile on his face, no matter what, is, what you're uh, talking about. When it comes to politics, he is born to the manor. Yep. I mean, he is a glad hander, and he's Mr. Optimistic and uh, energy for days. Well, he's 38. He's a baby. He's like a, a puppy. I know. He's a political. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just got so much energy. Yeah, it's not know. right. It's actually not fair. Anyway, so. Do I get I get to do this? Yeah, you, what do you want? What do you drink? No, wine? I mean, I, uh, yeah, the red wine. Oh, great. Usually I'm a lightweight, and I'm like one and done. However... We'll see. <laughs> However, I mean, I'm in Club Random. Why not? You're in Club Random. I mean, it is a, It is supposed to be a nightclub. It lo- really looks like one. I always say this, but without the music, it's just like a three-legged stool with two legs. <laughs> but I wanted to have a, a place where it felt like we were not on camera. There's nobody else in the room. A close As close as I can get to what it would really be like just to sit down and talk to you, to which I've always wanted to do. Because I always thought you were great on ESPN. You watched? Of course. You don't think I'm a sports fan? Well, 
you're busy and you're California and California. Well, I'm East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. Well, so. I, not, it doesn't feel like that anymore. I'm, though. I've never abandoned the New York teams. That's who right. I root for. You know, I was a no, part, I, just, I was an owner of the Mets. Did you know that? I no. was a minority owner of the Mets Past for ten tense. years. Yeah, Steve Cohen bought the team two yeah. years ago. Thank, thank God, because during the pandemic, we lost. I lost a fortune, everybody, all the minority, oh, yeah. Yeah. because we didn't play any games. Exactly. And we had capital calls up the ass. But he came in and, and did, I did very well at that. Immediately. Well, I mean, the Mets, are you kidding? I couldn't believe when they were, they sold 40% of the team in 2011. Yeah. Not all to me, but to a select, select, it's whoever, it was like first come, first serve. I couldn't believe I got, I said, I can't, of all the rich in New York <laughs> City, None of them want a piece of the Mets. The Mets. That comes with your box and a parking spot. Even if it was just that, it's the Trump change. Just to say that you're an owner of a professional exactly. sports team. Exactly. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so. So do you miss it? it no, because I'm, you know what? There's too much sweating of <laughs> the money, like the Mets. Yeah. Like, I mean, Christ, if I was part of what Steve Cohen spent. Oh my gosh. The most expensive team in baseball yeah. that just shit the bed. Yeah, again. I would, the capital calls this year would be, I, I would, I would be, uh, <laughs> I can't even speak. <laughs> no, no. It would not be good. So, no, it's nice to just be a fan. It was a great yeah. thing for, for a decade, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to just be a fan. Unless we were guaranteed <laughs> to make money, and plainly we're not. Plainly that team. I mean. It's sad. To have Verlander and um, Scherzer and it just doesn't work. And then they're now they're both leading their teams to the... Of course. You know, they're doing what they were supposed to do for the Mets. Not mm -hmm. that they... He, they weren't wrong that those two guys can't still do it. Oh, no. They had rough starts for mm -hmm. different reasons. And it just... it just It's it's jinxed. And listen, I was a um, Cubs fan. I still am. But, you know, when you're, when you're covering it... That's where it, you're you, from, you, Chicago? No. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm homeless, kind of. My dad was military. Oh, so, so you moved around. So I, yeah, I don't. I, but I literally don't have a home. I was talking with a friend recently. Um, I'm part time in Florida. I have a place down there, and within a year, I'll be down there full time. Your favorite place, right? I do Florida. like Florida. I love Florida. And she's um, she's so cute. She she we had lunch, and she had just come from picking out the burial plots for her and her husband and their son when they all die. Oh Lord. And I was like. You did what? And she was all excited. She's like, oh, it's beautiful. And they're having some mausoleum, some walk-in. And she goes, I'll be buried here. And then my husband and eventually my son, who's eight. And hit, and I thought, wow. And she's excited. She goes, well, where are you going to be buried? And I thought, I've actually never considered that. Be and I don't have a home. I haven't either. Really? Okay, so if I ask I'm, you now, I mean, be I'll, New York. I'll be dead. I don't, why do I care? So you don't care about that? <laughs> it's not my job. No, but what if what, what about <laughs> somebody the, else left? <laughs> no, but for, no. See, that's not fair to leave it for them. For the many people who oh. love you, who want to come visit you. Visit me when I'm dead. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be very good company. True. <laughs> True. You know, I used to have a bit about they for a while they were making literally what they call a talking tombstone, where they would put a message. Your voice. Yes, it, like. No. And I remember saying uh, the joke was. Uh, you're dead. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of you. But uh, no, I don't. I don't really care. I mean, I guess maybe when it gets closer to the time where I feel like it's happening, I'll be like, "Oh shit!" I haven't even really thought about cremation or burial. I don't really want my body to be eaten by worms. But then again, I'm dead. But you don't care. Do you? I do. Now. About mine or yours? Oh, you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start with you. Uh, no, I because I have kids. Oh, you I, do. I don't want them to feel obligated to come to visit me. Mother's Day, my birthday, whatever, once a year. Like I don't want them to feel that. So, and and again, I don't have a hometown. So you're nice. I am really nice. That's actually. very considerate. I know. I like even them. after you're dead, you're thinking of people. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nice. Before I die and after that, good luck. Okay, here's the Me, thing. Me, I'm like, fuck you. I'm dead. No, but here's the problem. <laughs> it's your problem now. No, it's, but that's that's not cool, in my opinion, because you're going to leave them when you have the power to do it now. You're going to leave them having to make decisions. Okay, Mom. Like, just do you're, it for them. Okay, stop nagging me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I, I wanted like to be I'm nagged, better. I'd get married. But Yeah, you've never been married. You're welcome. No, I mean, I, I, I take it as a point of pride at this point because for years it was like, oh, my God, what a weirdo. And now everybody is, gives me a high five. 
<laughs> because they've all been through horrific divorces. Yeah. You're married? Not anymore. Oh. See? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it story. just seems, it seems not, not inevitable. There's certainly happy marriages. But it takes a certain kind of person who I think is becoming rarer and rarer in the world, partly because the world changes. Things move so quickly, and there's so many imp things hitting your sensory, whatever, <laughs> sensory things in your brain. It's not like the old days when you lived on the prairie and you only, no. you know, it was easy to stay with your spouse because you never met anybody else. And now you're bombarded with all this stuff. And it's very hard to reconcile, I think, this overload of stimulation in the real world, and then, you know, I mean, no marriage can stay fresh on the... <laughs> I, I know where like, you're going. I feel like the look says it all. I, what? You're, no. you're just giving me that... <laughs> no, I, I'm actually looking forward yes. to this conversation. Well, yeah. I mean, that's true. I mean, what marriage people... I mean, there's no such thing, I don't care what anybody says, there's no such thing as hot monkey love 20 years into a marriage. There just isn't. There's, I've made my peace <laughs> with a kind of a married sex life. I've made my peace with it, okay. Or there's lots of sexless marriages. That just happens. Or there's it cheating. Happens a lot. Or there's cheating, or there's divorce. Those are the choices. So, if you're in a committed relationship, though, <laughs> right. there's no difference, right? So it no can still be, it, well, it can still be boring in that way right. if you're in a committed relationship. Right. So your point is, why would you why would you sign some piece of paper? Why would you have the government involved in something like that? Especially if then you have to have potentially an ugly divorce. I mean, but if you're in a committed well, relationship. You better have a I mean, if you want to be long term with someone, you better have a plan to stretch it out, is my view. In other words, yeah. like I don't think you can see someone every day. It just doesn't work. That's what's gonna kill it. This goes. But that against. doesn't work with like kids and shit. Kids and shit, exactly. You know, it, <laughs> those it kids just, and shit. you can't be like. Well, but I actually think it's, it's especially for people who travel for work um, and then one's home with the kids. I actually right. think that that probably does enhance the marriage. Yeah, if you're not together 24-7, 365. Totally. Um, for the kids and, and ideally, I mean, the statistics say, right, right no, with absolutely. two parent households. I mean, here's, here's the problem and it's not a problem. I come from... I mean, I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. My parents have been married almost 52 years. And mm. and they got married in 1971. Mom's white, Irish Italian, small town in Massachusetts where she's from. My dad's black, army brat himself. And in 71, interracial couples were not allowed, were not a thing. I mean, they were just recently allowed. What they went through- Well, they through, were legally allowed, but legally, barely. Yes. I think, I it think was, loving, the Supreme Court loving ruling was 67. So, it, yeah, it had just been so a few a years. Thing. And aside from whatever the law did or didn't say, right. just within their homes and my mom's family, like my parent, mom's parents disowned her for marrying a black man. Right. So um, for them to now be 52 years in. Right. So my bar was here. And, that's and, and <laughs> think of, I mean, look. You always have to say this in Woke America. Yes, we still have a lot of work to do. But think of how far we've come. I mean, for them. I mean, for ever, to look at TV, I mean, Biden once said this in a speech. Of course, you know, he was just rambling, but he wasn't wrong. He went off once about like, turn on the TV. <laughs> and you'll see like every couple in a, in a commercial is an interracial couple now. <laughs> I swear to God he did this. Or to, oh, I believe it. Yeah. And he's not wrong, you know. So that, I mean, from to come from a place in 1971 where it was barely legal yeah. and people were disowning you mm -hmm. to where everybody in a TV commercial Correct. <laughs> looks like you. Well, they, they force a, that now for sure. And, and every, every commercial is so diverse. Here, that's a long way. But I agree. And people want to talk about, and this is where I get in trouble, people want to talk about how terrible it is now um, and all the things that we have gone through, uh, we, meaning everybody. People want to big themselves up 100%. by thinking like, if I think it's worse than you, I'm a better person. That doesn't make you a better person to be gloomier. Be yeah. realistic. You know what I love in a person? Realism. Just tell me what it is. Because yeah. I don't deny 
any of the horrible side, there's still sure. horrible in America, lots of horrible, sure. including racism. And, but the progress that has been made is but significant. It's not it's significant, exactly. We're not, you know, these people who are like irredeemable and will never change. We have changed. I mean, like, I lived through it. This is the thing with young people, like, I, I don't have to look it up. I saw it. We all saw it. Lived it. We saw, yeah, we saw it. We saw the change happen. And yes, still work to do and when places Barack to Obama go. When Barack Obama was elected, I'll never forget the conversation with my dad and his mother, who I forgot how old she was also at that point. biracial Obama. Yes, which that topic is so fascinating yeah, well, to me. I, I hate that. Because, I, he doesn't, <laughs> because he doesn't own that. He owns it when it's convenient. He doesn't, he doesn't own that, and, and that, is, that is his absolute right. And I've gotten in trouble for these comments before. It's his absolute right. But, but, but on that okay. note, um, it is when, they, when, when he won, what my 90-some-year-old grandmother, black grandmother said, and what my father said, right. it had nothing to do with his policies. It was the fact that this country had gotten to the point where that could happen. And that was a beautiful thing. And I didn't vote for him, but I, I loved... You didn't vote for Obama? Not. Who did you vote for? McCain? <laughs> really? I did, yeah. Look, I like John McCain, but I voted for Obama. I mean, you know, John McCain was an honorable guy. He's the only Republican I can remember that when um, somebody in an audience, some crazy redneck, said some shit about Obama, and we've seen this with other Republicans who just never deny it and said, you know, he's a, a Muslim who wants to destroy him or something, you know, and yeah. McCain didn't go, thank you, ma'am. He went, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am. He's not. He's an honorable guy who just has different policies. That I love that. I love that. It's so simple. So I like John McCain. I do too. But For he, was me not, was, he would not have been a better president um, than Obama. I Obama, just didn't like, I, did, I didn't like. Um, you're so lucky you lost that election because as soon as Obama got into office, the, the economy crashed like crazy, like it hadn't since the Depression. Yeah, right and away. Fucking no drama Obama. He, he just still doesn't get quite the credit he should for that. I mean, this country could still be in a depression. Mitt Romney wanted to like let General Motors go down. Mm -hmm. You know, Obama like calmly got the money. Yes, they all hated him because he bailed out the banks. Yeah, but we'd all be wearing rags. <laughs> yes, the bankers are always gonna win. Here's, here's the thing, as, as I don't disagree with that at all, but to me, and this might sound cheesy or annoying to some people, but this was literally how I was raised. Um, it wasn't about race. As wonderful as it was that we as a country got to that point. And as, I mean, I was so happy to see him there and his wife and his beautiful daughters right. on the stage in Chicago. Like, I was so happy because I, even at that, at a younger age, obviously, than my father and my grandmother, to see that we had come that far. But to me, it wasn't about this. Because if we're voting based on this, that's racist. E even if it's for the minority candidate. That's, I'm the whole Martin Luther King Content of my character versus color of my skin. I'm an army brat, no, and I'm to a, me, it, right. it it is a, not about this. And so I had to put that aside, even though I loved seeing him there right. and respect him tremendously to this day. But I don't care what race you are, and if I do, then I'm being a hypocrite. No, that's my politics too, because I'm an old school liberal, and that's the Martin Luther King liberal. That's the by the way, the kind of the old Obama, because Obama doesn't sound today like he did when he ran. You know who sounds like Obama in 2008 mm -hmm. is Tim Scott. So interesting. So interesting. It's the way it. differently though, because his but, delivery is is quite different. Oh, from he's Obama, not but, nearly the politician, yeah. but his like, you know, only in America is my story possible, yes. and like racism is real, but it's not the only fucking thing. That's Obama, and that's Tim Scott, and Obama because his party has gone way left on that issue. Mm -hmm. um, I think through a, a weird place, but, and I, that's why I always try to say, there's a difference between woke and liberal. There is. Liberal is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King, content of their character. That's not what the woke believe. Mm -hmm. Woke believe race is the most important thing to see all the time, everywhere, in every situation. They want to divide. They it want- It certainly has that effect. 100%, that, but because in my lifetime, We've never been this divided, and it's never been this ugly, period. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I know. So, and I love what Tim Scott is saying. I love what Obama said. Martin Luther King was a Republican. Yes. People, well, don't, people, don't, people don't talk about it. And again, well, that definition <clears throat> has changed as well. 
But I mean, his- Totally. That's the thing people don't understand. I think when they, again, they're young and they don't teach it in school anymore. So they just live in the present. And no, us older people, we do remember things. And back in our day, they taught them in school. Yes, until the third, the, till <clears throat> Kennedy, the Republican Party was the party that more supported the rights and aspirations of the African-American Absolutely. population. I mean, Dixiecrats, this is as late as 1948, mm -hmm. walked out of the Democratic Convention because it was considering a civil rights bill. Mm -hmm. The South used to be called the Solid South. They meant the Solid Democratic South because they were the ones who, who, who undid Reconstruction after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who put in Jim Crow. Everybody in the South was a Democrat, mm -hmm. po political-wise, mm -hmm. until Kennedy came into office and said, no, we're going to integrate, and then they switched to the Republicans. So, you know. But no one knows any of that history. <laughs> Nobody does. Like None of the people who attack me don't. Yes, exactly. Okay, high five, because I know. you know you, who I get No, we have a lot in common. Which is insane, because I never thought, I mean, years ago, I never thought um, that we would say that, but I, I've been watching a ton over the last couple of years, and I think we do. And by the way, even if we didn't, that's the thing that frustrates me the most. Who cares? Exactly, but that's also what we have in common. We both believe that. To be respectful. That's what I'm always preaching. It's to like, be respectful of each other's different opinions. Stop being in your little silos where you only want to talk to the people who are just like you and anybody else, I'm going to unfriend you. I don't want to know. It's like, you know what? <laughs> you have to, un it's just like a marriage. Not that I would know, but like <laughs> I always say, the three key words are not I love you. They're let it go. You just have to let it go. Oh. You have to be able to talk to somebody who and say to, say to yourself, how can this person be so cool and so smart and so right about A, B, C, D, and then E? They're completely nuts. They want to vote for Trump, you know, or whatever <laughs> it is. And they're saying the same thing about you. And you have to be okay with going, yeah, okay, A, B, C, D, and I let it go. I can't, I, we're all different. Get over yourself, people. But that's what... So that's the hypocrisy, I think, in where we are today. And in particular, with that woke side that preaches all of it, diversity and tolerance and acceptance and inclusion. And to me, and I've been saying this a lot lately, I, I, I remember I did a speech at my alma mater. I went to Indiana University probably 12 or 13 years ago. And there were some things in the news, I don't remember what, but it was, I, I came up with the title of my speech, uh, Practice Diversity, But Mean It. Right. And who knew that all these thought. years later? So Diversity that's where it thought. begins for me. Yeah. And so when we silence you no. because so of true. our opinions and our positions on things, that is so hypocritical. And I'm just going to say, based on my experience, the people who are the most guilty of that are obviously, um, in my position, being more center-right, definitely more on the conservative side. Right. Um, are from the left, but it's not just disagreeing, it's attacks, it's death threats, it's threatening to rape my daughters. It's another level of ugliness that to me right. is inexcusable. But here's the thing, what has happened is quite often when those threats come and when it gets super ugly and then you get canceled on Twitter X, that's happened so many times now, I'm like, bring it. Like, I, I'm so not afraid right. anymore. But what they expect is for you to be afraid and to just go quiet and run from it. And that's what I did, and many people do, and I see why, because it can be very costly in many ways. But the beautiful thing to me is when you realize, wait a minute, they took me down, when they tried, and, I, and I'm still here, and I'm back again and again. They just believe that you're eventually gonna go away and be scared away, and I, and I get it, because it usually works. And then they don't know what to do when you're no longer freaking afraid. Another thing we very much have in common is just it makes me crazy, but no one will talk about it, and and the hypocrisy in it. Well, I talk about. It. Yeah, you do. Not you specifically, but I will now. Club Random is brought to you by the audio marketing gurus at Radioactive Media. The vacations are over, and now it's time to get back to work. Let me ask you: What are you doing to grow your business? Don't just use Google and social media when you can acquire new customers by partnering with shows like mine, elevating your brand. Wouldn't you like to generate up to nine times more leads? You can when you combine the power of audio and video with text messaging. 
Club Random has been partnering with radioactive media with clients such as Signal Wire, Heat Holders, wine enthusiast Lumi Micro Dosed Gummies, and they can customize a campaign for you. For a limited time, receive $1,000 toward your first campaign, plus free text messaging by going to radioactivemedia.com or text the word RANDOM to 511-511. Discover how audio marketing can surpass your current strategies. Just go to radioactivemedia.com or text RANDOM to 511-511. Text RANDOM to 511-511 today. Terms, conditions, message, and data rates may apply. Everybody's always busy and it's hard to find wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with meals delivered straight to your door. So you'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. And I know because Factor sent me their food and it was so good that my chef threatened to quit. With Factor, skip the extra trip to the grocery store, which may be in a mall which means if you're in California, you greatly reduce your chances of getting caught in a smash and grab. And forget the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factors fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Choose from more than 34 weekly dietitian approved meals and level up with gourmet plus options, prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. And during the day, avoid that bag of chips or candy bar with lunch to go. Effortless meals like grain bowls and salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash random50 and use code RANDOM50 to get 50% off. That's code RANDOM50 at factormeals.com slash RANDOM50 to get 50% off. I mean, if you're talking about the vaccine stuff, we're almost exactly on that, not just the same page, I think, but also the same history because you had a show that they wouldn't let you do unless you got the vaccine. Yep. And I, my life, absolutely, I would never have been allowed near that building if I didn't get the vaccine or to work on the road doing stand-up in theaters. That was where people were in 2021. Yeah. So there was just no, and I, I didn't want it. I didn't, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I recommend it to people who have comorbidities. If you're obese, if you're 90, whatever. But it should be your decision with your doctor. We're talking about Obama, his big thing was, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. What fucking good is that if I can't take my doctor's advice? And thousands of doctors dissented, many more, because they're intimidated from talking out. But even the ones who did, I mean, there was just a giant case called Missouri versus Biden. I don't know if you saw that, but two doctors, Jay Bhattacharya and Martin Kulldorff, they're esteemed brilliant people in their field, they dissented on how we handled this. And they were, the the lawsuit which they won in federal court says, yes, the government colludes with tech companies to silence anybody who doesn't want to put out your version. And we're talking about medical science. It is something that is, of course, debatable. That's what science means. So it was great that a, a court finally recognized this. It's disgusting, though. And, you know, we should have been allowed to, like, continue our lives and treat our bodies. I mean, how, we're not, I'm not saying vaccines are evil or, I'm just saying that one for that disease for my body wasn't right. It would be like telling everybody to take antibiotics. Yes. Yes. I, I mean, we're not wrong. We are. They want to shut us up because they know they're not right. They, they, they know that we are right. And they know that now things are being discovered and it's getting out. I remember May of 2020, um, I always stay up late and listen to podcasts late at night, building laundry, whatever. And I remember, I forgot which podcast I was listening to, but it was, there was a well, doctor now you're on listen to this. from the Mayo Clinic. There's no one that fits better with folding laundry. Obviously. 
come on. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather be in Club Random than be with the penis microphone? Come on, it's better. There's a lot there that you just uh, They're said. just... <laughs> yes, but, and the, the good thing is, is now I know where to find you. Exactly. Now I know where to come to Club Random. Yes. There's so many good people that we already did to listen to. I know. I've been listening. I saw uh, Stephen J defended you. He was here once. We got drunk. I didn't know Stephen A. Stephen A. Stephen yeah, A. Stephen A. <laughs> Stephen I'm J. Not, I, I'm doing a Biden. <laughs> Did you see him try to say like LL? LL? <laughs> so, you, so you put LL I mean, cool J in for Stephen A. Say what you want about Trump. He remembers it's Kanye. <laughs> yes, he does. He certainly does. Um, I interviewed Biden right after he was elected. Really? Yeah. Wow. And... It was taped. It was for the 6 p.m. sports. For ESPN? Mm-hmm. It was right before the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Oh, of course. Which oh, of they course. ended up moving out of Atlanta, if you recall, because yes. of the yes. uh, alleged racist voting rules, which is, is insane and so well, stupid. Well, they did have egg on their face for that one because yes. they did polling afterwards, and I think I'm getting this correct, 0%. <laughs> Of people, including people of color, said they had a bad voting experience. Of course, or they couldn't vote. Of course, it's so stupid. Well, and it, but by the way, I mean, that's so that, that could have been because they shone such a light on it that they dared not. No, I don't think so. <laughs> give me a good, break. Good, good. Argue with no, me. No, give me a break. That is so stupid. That for the people to say <laughs> that that it's a, it's racist to have people to show a freaking ID to vote. What, because, I agree. Be, because we're not, as black I, people, we're I not agree. smart enough to it's remember so, our driver's license. It's so funny when the woke do these things that they think are so not racist that are then... It's really, actually racist. So, uh, yeah, same thing with the... They constantly conf conflate, like, black people committing violence with police being bad to black people. Like, let, let's pull the police out. Well, that hurts... The people, you know, the, the people who need help the yeah, most. Yes, who have legitimate businesses. They, it's they, it's almost like they're picturing that. Oh well, of course, who are the black, who are the cops going to be bad to the criminals, and who are they? Like it's so racist to do that. And of course, they have polling on this too. More African Americans want more policing than white people do. This is the great story in Minneapolis. They either fired, I forget, or uh, so many cops quit. Yeah after the George Floyd uh, murder. Okay, so... Well, they were trying to defund completely after right. that, too. So, of course, what did the cops who weren't working for the police force do? They hired themselves out as private security. Yes. In, where? In white neighborhoods that now felt unsafe because there weren't enough cops. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. again, racism solved. <laughs> Yes. So honestly, they show their stupidity. They so stupid. No, constantly, constantly. <laughs> and that whole thing in Atlanta was just ridiculous. And so I, I was interviewing Biden leading up to that. And he, I had to ask him if he supported, you know, pulling the game out of there. But the story was, and this, honestly, I don't like him. No. I think he's a terrible president. However, forget that. The human aspect of what we're witnessing right now with him, to me, is heartbreaking and it's inexcusable right. by the family. When you knew during the election, and that was my point is, so we're taping it, not live, um, for my live show. It was like, let's let's tape this. And it is the President of the United States. Right. So I was okay taping. Usually, I hate taping live, 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 go, react, just whatever. Same thing with um, me. I'm better live. It's me just the pressure. Too. I don't know what it is. We're the same we're person. We're sickos is what we are if we like it live better. <laughs> the adrenaline rush. So we're, we had a technical issue. I'm like, really? Like, the the leader of the free world is sitting here. And it was it was satellite. It wasn't in person. We're having a technical issue. And so I had to, like, BS. I had to chit-chat oh. in, in waiting for us to start To rolling. him? Yes. And um, so... <laughs> Ask him about Corn Pop. What? He told he once told this long story about... It's... Never mind. It, corn, <laughs> corn Pop. You got to look... Okay, I have to look it, that Google up. Google it. Well, what he started to do... Of course, he has someone next to him, and he... They keep a black like curtain over the lens of the camera so you can't see him oh. until right. the last second that right. you can hear and we're chit-chatting and right. we're protecting him. Right. Maybe they do it with all the presidents. I don't know. I've only interviewed one. But mm. um, so I could hear him and I heard him and he goes, what, what, what is this for? <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, because yeah. my mic's on, everybody's listening in the control room. Wow. And he's like, who am I talking to? Oh. Wait, what, what, what's her name? 
And I was like, oh. This is like a naked gun movie. <laughs> just, I was going, oh my God. <laughs> um, and then he's like, he said, Sports Center, ESPN. And they told me, he goes, oh, uh, okay. And so I said, you know, what do you say? Hi, Mr. President. Right. Um, nice to meet you. And, um, and so I'm trying to just fill time. And he said, you know, I used to play football. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Yes, I, I, I know that. And now I'm, I think it was Delaware, University of Delaware, I believe. I didn't know um, that. Hence, yes. And so he started to tell football stories of his greatness. And I just was, again, I can't see him. You can see the curtain moving. Can, and that was the theme of the stories, that he was great at football? At football. He was the and hero he, in the story? And then he said, um, mm, wow. <laughs> he said, he goes, and I had the best hands. And... <laughs> What do you say to that? Well, ironically, Clinton used to say the same thing. <laughs> and that, so if, if it was Clinton, trust me, you wouldn't have any trouble chit-chatting. <laughs> well, he would have been all over. That. I would have preferred to keep it via satellite versus in person for Clinton as well. Um, but and then I said, oh, oh, so you were a receiver, and he started to explain it. And here's the saddest thing. He, his voice just trailed off. He said, I was good. And then he went silent and he goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> no, you're laughing. I thought it was so sad because I realized that's why he was in his basement during the whole election cycle. Right. Because even then, he couldn't finish his sentences. He struggled. And the, so forget about politics. I don't care. I didn't vote for him. However, right. that made me sad to so realize. So you didn't vote for he, Biden either? No. Wow. No. And that's okay. Thank I still you. love you. <laughs> okay, thank you. And also, no, 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 hell no, I didn't vote for Biden. And look, wow. look, like, even look with what the, we have. Even with the choice being Trump. Yes. But see, that's A, B, C, D, E. That's just the E. You got to accept the E. It's okay. It is. I, I, I will never really understand it or him or half the country. But you know what? I, I love people who have crazy E's. But I also think that. Everyone, and this is how I've learned to um, remain, I, my, my relationships and friendships and relationships with the family members is, is just who cares about the political stuff right. or else you're going to have right. those rifts. But I really think that what we fail to realize is everybody has a reason why they vote for Trump. They don't vote for Biden, whatever it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And I think if we don't respect their reasons, which are what? Based right. on their experiences then we are being closed-minded ourselves. Well, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, CNN is kind of like having a hard time. Yeah. And we were doing something on CNN. My real-time show was we do something called Overtime, which was for the Internet, and we it's, it's changed now that we've been off and CNN has new leadership and so forth. But we were doing a, a, a sort of a lightning round or whatever of real time on CNN. So I kind of got involved with CNN and I want to, I think the world needs a good CNN. And my advice to them was just what you said. Like the problem with, I feel what goes on in CNN is like Trump did that town hall mm -hmm. and the audience fucking ate it up. Yep. I mean, they, let, and it was, they said it was a Republican and I guess, Republican leaning audience, or maybe they said independent, whatever it was, they didn't dislike him from the beginning, but they just adored. And he's a good performer. Trip. You know, she looks, it's, it's a thankless job, the, the CNN. I would I, not want that job. I would not want that either. He's just, he's just who he is. He's in, as my friend says, I always quote this, insanity photographs. <laughs> The insane are charismatic. Hitler was insane. Charismatic. No, really. I, I don't know enough about Hitler to know he was charismatic. I believe he was insane. Well, yes. he was charismatic. Was I mean, he? you to get elected like that. Oh, absolutely. Mesmerizing. They have the footage. They made the movies. You know, look at Triumph of the Will. He just, look, the country was in a place like this country where there's a lot of resentment that he played on. But to be the guy who can play that fiddle, yes, it takes a certain kind of insane, evil genius. Well, and they're all egomaniacs, and it's all all about them. I, I got to meet Trump. Got to. I know you'd like that. I didn't mean to say I've that. met him, too. Okay, what did you think? Well, I met him before he was president. Oh, um, oh, oh. Once, 
what was that the, oh God, this is so dating of me and him. Like he hasn't changed. Okay, but this is probably like 25 years ago, 20 years ago, when I used to go to the Playboy Mansion parties. Everybody thought I lived there. Here, right around here. Right around right. here. I yeah. went there once. You went there once? I did. Uh, Super Bowl party, not like a private Friday night I, I invitation. Didn't. <laughs> I Let me clarify. Think you were uh, in half era. Although now I'm single. What the hell, right? Let's go. <laughs> uh, but that was a different era. I mean, I was in a different era. Uh, I enjoyed them, but I only went like five times a year. There was a, there was like five parties they had. They had a okay. Halloween party. They had a New Year's party, and they had the famous Midsummer Night's Dream party. Okay. Where your women were. I mean, this everybody does it now. They wear it to fucking Walmart. But I mean, back then <laughs> it was like a big thing for a woman to wear lingerie out at night. Yeah. Okay, so that was the Midsummer Night's Dream Party where your men wore whatever they wore to bed and women wore the lingerie. And he was there, and he was in his power suit with the red tie. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. And, and Everybody and, else. And you're wearing what? I, that, I was a cool smoking jacket. Okay, that's Because cool. I always loved smoking jackets, yeah. and I have some great ones. And uh, that's what I was wearing. Everybody was in some sort of sleepwear, and he walked around. He did like a couple of laps, as I recall. I feel like I saw like the him, laps like, he did around like Hillary sir. on the on the stage, like that. <laughs> yeah, like a shark just going around the pool. I don't know what. And you know, he was. I've heard this from everybody who know him. He was charming. Yeah. You know, he was a guy who really. He did, and ironically, he didn't seem like an egomaniac. Quite the opposite. It was like, you know, he tried. You could tell he wanted to. Make friends. Yeah. I think he's human, uh, despite, yeah. you know, I do, I do. I think they all are, even the ones I don't like. Like, even, even th that's what I mean, that moment with Biden. He is human, but he is insane. You know that. Oh, I, I mean, do. I mean, like, actually crazy. So Some my, of the things he does are just only a crazy person would do. I don't, I don't disagree. And I was always thoroughly entertained by Twitter and the craziness that he put out on Twitter. I'll say this, when I met him last summer and it was at his uh, golf course in Jersey Bedminster, it was for the, the with the Live Golf Tour. And um, it was, I, you know, it was unexpected to say the least. I didn't know I was gonna be meeting him. And I walked in and I had already begun my lawsuit against Disney and ESPN um, for their punish when they punished me. And so, I was introduced to him and they said, yes, she's doing Disney. And he all of a sudden was like, oh, <laughs> let's have a conversation. And it was quick, whatever. I had a, had a couple interesting stories to share with him. And immediately, you know what he wanted to talk about? Football. And that's my language. I mean, remember USFL and Trump? And so we got into oh, see, a man. great, I mean, as a sportscaster, we got into a great conversation about Justin Fields in particular, who's the, now the Chicago Bears quarterback, who was the Ohio State quarterback, who was part of the real push of athletes in college during COVID that pushed for the sport to come back. And when college football came back, the rest of the sports, the NBA followed. And Trump was responsible for helping bring sports back based on continuing to talk to commissioners and athletic directors and athletes and so Justin Fields had been one of the kids talking to Trump, begging him to okay. get him back. And Let's, so I'm just saying that right. it was cool I, to have what? a football conversation <laughs> I'm gonna give, with him. He brought the sport of football back Quickly, I'm going to give him a point. Give him a point, point for, for that. that. Now, let's, now let's go to where he was at the beginning of the crisis. Uh, it's nothing. It's not going to happen. At the, at the, at the, he completely fucking shit the bed when it was entering the country. Plainly, it was going to happen. We got it completely under control. It'll never happen here. I mean, how the how the disease originated? That's another. Which debate. he was right about the whole time. You mean talking about the lab? Mm hmm And everyone denied it. And well, said, look, I, from the beginning, was always on the page. We don't know. But stop saying I can't say it might be the lab because it absolutely might be. That was a, And, of course, as time goes by, it is now at least 50-50. Right now? Yes. It's it, well beyond 50-50. That's your opinion because I believe that, too. But that is not something you cannot get a consensus of people to believe. Well, that. because we also won't report all the facts. Of course, out of that's it. what you and I believe and right. know. Right. But the consensus is again right because a lot of this is suppressed. But if you just ask the man on the street, they would not. 
They would not give you that answer. They would. I, would well, it depends on which street. It depends on which street, but because here you're right. I think in many other parts of the country, yeah, it's wrong. And and I also think well, that people then sure. I mean, even me, you you laugh at some things, you roll your eyes. In two years, three years, I guess, when you think back to 2020, have made a massive difference. Here's the thing. I don't. I hate the way all of it was handled. What I do me try too. to do is is think back to that time and when everybody said, "Oh my God, it's coming." Shut down. I have a cousin who's really who pays attention to everything, and he. This is in January of 2020. He's like, "Listen, order your hazmat suits. There's these masks called N95. Oh, Go to Home Depot, like, because everybody oh, thought the world was ending. Washing the mail. Correct. Washing, leaving your packages on the front step for a week, like stupid. I didn't do that. I wanted the package. I needed my Amazon stuff. But point being, no one knew, and at that point, we all said, "Fine, we'll flatten the curve. Let's stay home." I left work. I had just right. gotten divorced. I had my three kids at home, and oh. I'm trying to. So it was all new, and we're shut down in freaking Connecticut, New England, because the rules there were a lot different than in other states. Certainly. So you new. just got divorced. I had just gotten divorced. Well, that's better than if you were about to get divorced, <laughs> and you'd have been trapped <laughs> with the enemy. Okay, everyone talks about how many people, people's questionable marriages were solidified, like we're done with thanks to COVID. Right. Or maybe went the other way. I we had just finished it. Right. My point is. <laughs> At that time, nobody knew. We didn't know what we didn't know. And it was right. something unprecedented. So well, I try not to judge, because it's easy to Monday morning quarterback and go back, even with Biden. I was never afraid of it. Of what? COVID. I was I, for two weeks, and that's it. And then I wasn't either. I was I never. Like those first two weeks when they said, if you go inside. I knew people had already had it. Like people. Sure. I remember I got sick. Thanksgiving, I was uh, I was going gonna go someplace. I was really looking to go forward to go on Thanksgiving 2019, and now maybe it was just a cold, but you know, many many people got it. We had known that even in the beginning, or we had suspected it, and and we're not affected at all. Right. And that's still true today. I mean, these people are not like talked about a lot, but there are people who are just very healthy with very strong immune systems. And all COVID for them was just one day they got up and they felt a little off, yeah. a little off mm -hmm. because your immune system is, you know, that's the police force and <clears throat> the bacteria and the <laughs> fungus, and that's the criminals. And, you know, it depends on what state your police force and mm. is in. I like and, that. and, you know, there are police forces that just like Beverly Hills, they don't, when we had the riots here, they asked the, the Beverly Hills belief chief, you know, what would he do if the riot got to Beverly Hills? And he said, um, we simply wouldn't allow that. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I want to live there. I love it. <laughs> Hello, that's where I, that's exactly where I want to live, you know? No, I, I wasn't, I was never afraid. I was concerned. And again, all we had was what was being reported. But then after a couple of weeks, um, first of all, I wasn't, I was getting on planes the entire time. I was I the entire I was going down to Florida to the beach and I'm I, like I'm out of here. I'm I, not staying in this. I will not go into specifics, <clears throat> but oh. my friends thought I was trying to get it. <laughs> Can you give me one specific? No, I <laughs> cannot. But Come on. but it, I mean look, and I'm not this is could possibly just be coincidence, but <clears throat> I was fine for the for 14 months when it was out there when I didn't have the vaccine. Then I got the vaccine. And I got it like a month later. Oh, me and of too. Of course, it wasn't serious when I got it. And I always say, perhaps the vaccine spared me from a very uh, serious bout. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case, but it's possible. We just don't know. And anybody who says they know the definitive answer to that question is lying. Um, and this was always my thing with vaccines was, I'm not against them. It's just that there's so much we don't understand about the human body and the vaccine's role in that, that I'm more afraid of cancer yes. than I am of COVID. So is, am I saying COVID causes cancer? Of course not. I'm saying we don't know what causes cancer. We don't know what confluence of things that affect us, especially in the modern world, in a way th stuff never did before. So many thousands of chemicals that were never in our system before. Yep. Mercury and lead, you know, the metals in our body, electromagnetic energy, the cell phone doesn't happen from magic. Of course. Okay, you know, 
all the, there are people who like are driven mad. You know this by by the waves from cell phones, mm -hmm. and there's like one little place. I saw a documentary on this in like West Virginia where there's no like fucking signals. You know, normal times, never anything. And they yeah. all they like live there. Like yeah. in the woods to get away they from like it. They like it. And now the cell phone companies are like, no, every place has to have it. Mm -hmm. They're just, they're literally going to drive these people crazy. So, so I'm just saying we don't know what causes cancer, Parkinson's, a million things. They just haven't figured out. Mm -hmm. So don't fucking tell me <laughs> that you, ha you people who haven't figured shit out how I should treat my body. Especially <laughs> considering, I know, I'm like... I I'm, I'm first on so grateful that you've said this for all this time because you've been consistent with it, and so few people have. And I, I wanted to hug you. Sounds through like my... it sounds like you faced even worse things than I did. Oh, it's I mean, insanity! I mean, these threats to your children—that oh, yeah. is so unconscionable, especially from the people who see themselves as the good people. We just assume Trump's bad, and by the way, Trump is bad. But <laughs> okay, but. That, yeah, he is bad. That doesn't make you the good people if you do things like threaten no, children. No, they're, they're exact. Hip, they're hypocrites. Completely. Children? When they go on social media <clears throat> to find my kids. You know, the fact that they will, they're will they willing to drag children into all their political squabbles, the fact that a lot of the LGBT, you know, battles are being fought because, well, we want to do this with and, you know, tell children about this at this age. And, you know, I no. feel... I feel no. like it's, you know, you, we used to leave children out of the battle. Forget who's right or wrong on which side of the battle. And by the way, like everything, I think there could be a, a sensible middle position. Like, of course, trans is a real thing. Of course. But it's also trendy right now. You sure. know, like both things are true. If you're a reasonable person, you get that. Of course. We didn't, you know, one, one of my daughters, my youngest, this is probably two years ago. How old is um, she? She's now 17. They're 17. 17? You have a 17? Oh. 17, 19, you and know, 21. Uh, when are people going to... I have a legal drinker, a 21-year-old. Just one more thing on the biracial thing. When are people going to realize, <laughs> especially the people who like uh -oh. want to divide us even more, uh -oh. that almost always the biracial people are gorgeous? <laughs> I don't know about like, that. It's, it, I, name <laughs> one bad one. Uh Oh, oh, Derek like, Jeter, Mariah Carey. I mean, it, I could list like so many people. So you, I, I can't. yes, they're yeah, Obama. Yeah. That just because nature wants us to fuck far apart from anyone who like we could be related. So, to. Oh my God, I can't with you. <laughs> well, that does happen in royal families. I mean, the Egyptians, that dynasty fell. Yes. Not that I have to tell our listeners, partly because they were so royal. You talk about privilege. They were so royal that they could only like fuck their brother or sister. Stop. Like nobody else got into the VIP. I swear to God. That so they were like sister fucking. And of course, <laughs> you know, eventually the Egyptians were Coming being back to bite you in the Yeah, being yeah. ruled by, you know, slobbering fools, you know, like oh, Trump. Oh my oh my God. <laughs> If you're committed to your healthy routine this year, you need Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by a PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. And as Americans, we already have plenty of those. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut, where you need it most. Having a Z-Biotics before drinking makes such a difference the next day. There's no better way to feel your very best the morning after drinking than with Z-Biotics. Go to zbiotics.com slash random to get 15% off your first order when you use random at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash random and use the code random at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode. I love it that you love Trump. I do. No, you don't. I do. It would. It's so much more interesting 
And okay. it's and it's on, what I, is I, interesting about it though? It's honest. It's honest and also wait, what wait, wait, I, wait, can I correct I was, one thing? I don't love him. <laughs> There's a big difference. Okay. In in voting for someone and loving them because by the way, well you don't hate I him don't and love, I do. I don't love any politician. I right. think they're all there's always a screw list with all of them because who would want to do that? And we're grateful because right. somebody needs to, but the way that it has been done, I don't care on which side, is despicable in most ways. Well, I don't I don't right. love him, I don't hate him. I what hate I him. have I know you <laughs> made that clear. I've been watching you for so long. But here, it's but it's he, okay. But here's and no, and I, here's the thing though. What I have been able to do, well, I forced myself to do, no matter who it is separate who they are as people and whatever they've done in the past, their track record, as my dad used to say, from their policies. And I literally try to vote based on what they believe in, what they're saying. Hopefully we can believe what they're saying, right? Um, and making my decisions based on that because I think most, all of them are crappy human beings. Well, <clears throat> some of them, yes. I mean, crappy, it does attract crappy yeah. because power. A hundred percent. And again, that thing I said before, you don't have to actually be good at anything. Right. You just have to want it and get elected class president. It's, it is kind of an amazing thing. It's, I just, but, I, I just <clears throat> think it's important. And I don't think most people can, can separate and they go with their feelings and our feelings don't freaking True. matter. Right. So, so no matter how much you hate or love someone, like what are they doing that is not just best for you and your family, but for the country and our national security and our economy. And so I just try to separate and not look at the crazy. I have a habit on this show that, that, it, that it's really a show. This is <laughs> of, a show. Of like, this is a show. I like getting ideas for people in their career, but I swear to God, I just had a brainstorm. You should be on The View. Hell no. Uh, they should pay you, they should like, I've been well, on The View, and it but, didn't go so well. Because you know what? At The View, yeah, they you, don't want your view. They, they exactly, only want theirs, and they're but, bullshit. And the problem is they've never had anybody who's smart enough to actually say it the way you're I, saying it. I disagree it. with that. I don't. Who? Elizabeth Hasselbeck. I love her. And she's smart, but guess what? When you're four on one. No, they... Yeah. You're that born also, one, and, and I experienced it. I felt it. And they were nice to me, relatively speaking. Whoopi was very nice to me. Jenny McCarthy. This is Whoopi, Jenny McCarthy, Sherry Shepard, and Barbara Walters. And they were great to me. Barbara, whatever. The other three were great. And what I know for a fact, I did it four times, and then they had me audition when they were making changes again. They 100% are full of it. They don't want to hear your view if you think differently than they do. And they are fine telling lies on that stage and that set. And because they know that if someone calls them on it, then they're just going to talk over them and have the audience clap and go to break. So the show to me is despicable. Okay. And it makes me sad because the potential for 20 some years, I respect the, the, the length that they've done it, but the potential is incredible and they've ruined it. But I think you could handle it. You know what, I, though? It's I, exhausting. <laughs> like, do we want to walk into that every day? And I think that, to me, I'm trying... Yes, because uh, it's like... <clears throat> they don't want me, though. You, they won't even I'm call. telling you, no, but you I worked for ABC. I worked for them for 16 years. They didn't want my view. I, 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 I was under the same umbrella of Disney. They easily could have called me, especially the last several years, right. when these conversations no, have to so, take place. Uh, you're so right. They won't call me. Why? Right. Because they know. They know that I'm not afraid. No. They don't want that. I, I mean, so no, thank you. I've had the most amazing run with HBO, and I love them dearly for it. Yeah, you know, um, the show wasn't that good the first year. They stuck with it, things like that. And you know, I'm not somebody who's ever going to win them an Emmy. <laughs> I mean, that's just, <laughs> and we've made our peace with that. Um, but I always, you know, live under the sword of Damocles. Also, I feel like. When you say the things that we're saying, which are ironically not really always conservative. I mean, maybe you are a little more than I am, but just sort of like commonsensical. And how can you argue with that shit? They don't want to hear it. They don't. And I always, I never decorate my office because I always think, I mean, I've been fired once by a network. I always think tomorrow could be the last day. As long as I am going to do what I do. Now, so far it's working, but yes, it could just, but... 
you got to get back on because you, this is exactly what the country needs. Mm -hmm. It's like somebody who you can't like say they're a hick mm -hmm. or they're dumb or they're, you know, it's like, come on, man. Just, can you just listen to everybody? Maybe they have a point. Um, they don't, I so, don't think, and number one, thank you, because anyway, it me, that means a lot for you. You'll do real time, please. I, I just. Will you? You'd be great on a real time pod. Really? Of course. You'll have me. It's all, <laughs> yes, you're, you're doing me a favor. I'm always looking. I mean, it's hard to find good panelists for real time. It wasn't for my old show, the Politically Incorrect show, because, you know, the, the whole point of it was. <laughs> let's listen. Let's mix the idiots with people who know things, and it'll be funny. <laughs> but it, uh, and it works. Yeah, it did. It was uh, it was funny. Some people, I, people to this day say they they like it better than <laughs> the one I do now, which is way better. But they don't. If that's what they see. That's what they see. But no. But real time, um, we need people who know their shit, know shit, know things. That old thing that people used to do, know things. And can speak in uh, in a in a way that's not conventional. It's what I'm always looking at. It's called real time for a reason. Yeah. You know, people who just I do not want to hear the talking points of the left or the no. right. I have you know my little group of people. We're going back Friday, and you know it's Sam Harris, DeSantis is at the top of the show. I see. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Wow, that's and awesome. I have a lot of things I don't like about him, mm -hmm. and I love the COVID shit. And he, so good. he wasn't wrong. I said it then. My audience, who it's like, yeah, you know what? He read a lot about it, and he handled it way better than the guy in Any in, other in New York. That was a disaster. And the New York Times did a hit job on him that was so disingenuous. But see, the fact that you're saying this, okay, let's name one other person in your industry in Hollywood who is, okay, pretty well known for being more on the left, right? Yes. Correct, not right, the Oh, left. I still get attacked for being but crazy for, liberal, Bill Ma yeah. Sure, but for looking at each situation <clears throat> independently. Yes, and issue, by issue. Each issue. I don't then, agree with, yeah, I don't know, like a lot of what DeSantis has done. He campaigned for election deniers. That I do not forgive. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I go into the Godfather, but um, yeah, but the but on COVID, why can't you admit this? Why this New York Times article was so it's disgusting because they they ran a, a headline saying basically I don't remember what it said word for word, but it was you know he fucked up the the pandemic, and then way at the end it says Florida did better <laughs> than most states in America. It's like if that's the if that's in the article, shouldn't that really be the headline? Of course it should. And but that's they, what breaks they, my heart. They cherry picked yeah. like a three month period during like the Omicron or whatever, or there were so many. Um, and but does it surprise you though? Like this doesn't surprise me one bit. Well, the New York Times didn't used to be that newspaper. Correct, no. they didn't used to, but they I feel used, like over the last no, several, I, really honestly, since 2016, <laughs> That's when everything has kind yeah, of gone correct. south. Because of Trump. Because, because of your it, guy. Because when, when one poll is insane, there, it's going to generate insanity in a mirror image. Yeah, but how, the about other we, how about we act like adults and control ourselves and not allow that to happen? <laughs> well, okay. No, like, gonna... again, just talk about the facts. You're right. One of the things, and, no, with right. and with DeSantis, I mean, did anyone actually take the time to read the Don't Say Gay Bill? Right. It Those words right. were not in there. This has well, nothing to do with not saying the words gay. And what did everybody do? They, they, the media tapped at that. Look right. at what ended up happening with, with Disney, which is ongoing. And those words were never once uttered. Yeah. What, he's do, what he was doing was what every parent, my kids are old now, older, right. whatever, um, is, is to say, you know what? Maybe we don't need to be talking about this in third grade. Right. No, I. I've, and, and so, they, but they turned that bill into something completely political, and it was BS. And no one stopped and called them on it. And the New York Times and all of those raps that should have done it, that we had their conf, right. they had our conference for all those years. Right. No, so now they wonder why we don't trust. Exactly. Because no, read it. I said the same thing. I said they could have called the "Don't Say Gay" bill. Let's go back to what we were doing five years ago, Bill. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't it that. Was. They act like it was the you know, post-Civil War period when right. we were so primitive, when we didn't think every baby was a jump ball <laughs> as to what. Okay, look you know, at the sports analogy coming exactly. in Exactly. Well, I love sports. Oh, I know you well, do. I big, love it. Well, the big three. I do no not hockey. have. No hockey. No hockey. No fucking soccer. Why did that make you angry when I when because, I said that? Like, because I'm an American. M E R. Oh my god. M E R I C A N. I'm a American. American. Yes. Okay. We, can I say this though? Baseball, the, football, basketball. Those are sports, not the, soccer. The hockey players, though, the NHL players. And tennis. What? Tennis. You like I mean, tennis? Well, I watched the, the the finals of like Wimbledon and the big ones. Okay, that, so, I mean, so that's that, great. That's not American then, if it's Wimbledon and Australian Open. <laughs> no, but it's, a, <laughs> and it's not even an American sport, right? Exactly. It's British. I mean, now it's dominant. So is baseball certainly. originally. Well, and now certainly with the Latin American influence on baseball, but. Did, so you were always a sports nut, like when you oh, were. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, Did let me watch? tell you this though. NHL, those guys, by far of the four professional sports in North America, the best that's what? to deal with. Yeah, let me clarify. The best. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're doing. <laughs> no, no. I, you just said the best. I don't. At what? <laughs> the best to deal with. The most kind. Um, Who? Uh, the, hockey players. Hockey players. They're Who so cares? accommodating. They're, their sports sucks. Their and sport it's does not suck. They're okay, such incredible great. athletes. Well, you know what? Watch hockey with Donald Trump. I don't care. I, I don't think Donald I, Trump watches hockey. No, but you do, and that's great. I actually don't watch that much anymore. I really don't. It's been kind of nice. Okay. Um, no football, and I and I agree because I'm not. I've never been big into soccer. I haven't. Um, I knew enough to do my job, yeah. and I appreciated it. Soccer's appreciated another it. one like hockey. No, but I'm football, basketball, like you. I'm the same. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> did you watch? The, did you ever watch the Ken Burns? Uh, oh, all his baseball? amazing documentaries. Did you watch that? Yeah, I watched. I well, it's not all of it. Really? Yeah, and it's a shame because it's, I know, I know well, the history. Shame. Well, it is because <laughs> because well, basically, yeah, I was you can having do it tomorrow. I was having too many kids. I was literally like, hey, I was in survival mode. I wasn't mode. accusing you. I no, was just no, because you. for me, it was one of those things like. As a as a sports lover and a baseball lover, the history, the historical part of baseball, you have to have watched all that. So it's on the list. It is interesting. Teams. Yeah. I mean, it it really is a story of America at that time. You know, the whole racial aspect to it. I mean, it and you know Ken Burns, he's pretty amazing. With, oh gosh. Yeah. Brilliant. And think about it. There's very few. Well, there's no other sports that have had that done. That kind of a historical look back at how it began and how it's evolved. No other sport has that. Really? I mean, what other doc do you have? You have the NFL Films that does great pieces. Yeah, you're right. But no one else has taken that kind of a look And football back. doesn't go back that far. Yeah, not compared to, yeah, not I mean, really, to just the 1920s. Right. You know, that's a century. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But the history yeah. within that is well, really awesome. I'm sure Netflix will be working on it now. That they should. So where are you going to land? You have to be on TV. You're, you're really too good at this. But, you Thank know, you. I would never, if I didn't sit down with you and talk to you today, I would never have guessed that you had this um, breadth beyond sports because that's what we saw you do. Well, no, thank you. Here, here's the thing. I had a job, and my job was to talk about sports, to interview athletes and analysts and to have those conversations. And I think when you're on ESPN or your job is a sportscaster, I'm gonna stay in my lane. I think it's important to do. And when we got out of our lane, that's when I had a problem with what our network did because then you'd start to divide. So I, I thought it was super important to stick to that while at work and to go deep on those stories and interviews. And we did two hours live every day. It was, and we write everything that we do. It, it's, a, it's a real grind. But I loved it. And so my I shouldn't have inserted my other beliefs about other things into my job. I think there's other platforms now to do that. I but that gets a little what, bit. What about a club random podcast? Wait, are you offering me a Absolutely. What? Start, yeah, we're gonna start having other podcasts under the club random podcast. Well, to umbrella. talk about what? This everything. What's in the news, not just sports. There that's Because too, I don't want to do just sports. Well, I, I well, love it. Once still. again, we're in agreement. <laughs> because I feel like, but I do feel like sports does. This is why I wanted to do it as a kid. 
brings us together. You know what? When Aaron Rodgers was here, mm -hmm. we had, I thought, the most lovely talk about that. And I, I, he was, you know, was always charming and He's great. truthful. He's great. And I said, you know, sports is a place where we really see races together because yes. the players are black and white. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly in two of them, majority black, mm -hmm. um, baseball, they're always like trying to make an issue out of like, there's less black ball pl baseball players. It's like, so what? This would be an issue if they were less black ball players than there were 20 years ago because we were barring them. <laughs> but we're not barring them. Right. They're choosing to play other sports or no sports at all. Correct. They're not into baseball. This is not an issue. It's not. We, we are. Right. We, not we. They are creating it. <laughs> right. Again. Okay. So this is the kind of common sense stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we, America needs to hear. And I think. There's just, there's got to be an audience that's enormous for this because so many people come up to me and say, you know, just the common sense. I appreciate you just, you know, the, that, that, like, the people who are sick of the liars on the fringes, right. both fringes. I, I truly believe that more people think like we do. Even if you're on the right or the left of, you know, of the middle, for the most part, I think the vast majority of people agree with us and that you can have different opinions, but let's have calm, professional, not even professional, just kind, leading with kindness with our oh. discussions. And, and you don't but, have to freak out and scream and yell. And oh, by the way, okay, I might be able to talk a hell of a lot of things about football, but you know, I'm a mother. <laughs> right. I'm a, an army brat. I, I care so much about our country. I always um, got along well with army kids. Why? Because they're not spoiled little f bitches, <laughs> you know, because they grew up with a military father and they just, they just have a, we're, a, so a, a, we're down to a earth. decorum, you know, they just, uh, I, there's, there's a few institutions left. I hate to say this, but the Catholic, Catholic schools, I can usually tell if someone went to Catholic school mm. because even though it's the religious school, ironically, it's the last one that like teaches kids actual shit and doesn't put up with nonsense. Yeah. So kids like no grammar and spelling and they can form a God sentence. God forbid. Like, you know, like the old stuff that they used yeah. to in school when I went, Catholic schools. Yeah. <laughs> Funnily, ironically, the last place. That, that's why lots of people who aren't Catholic they go there. try to get their kids into that school because they're exactly. like, oh, yeah, they'll treat their kids that way. Kids should be treated. Yeah, and guess what? You're not going to be a furry and pee in a litter box outside the classroom right. either. And and <laughs> exactly. one of my kids, I was saying no. earlier, like the the pronoun thing, and she she said about her one of her friends, I won't say the name, and she said, "Well, mom, she's a they now." And I, I about pulled the car over. I'm like, you didn't even know what a bleeping pronoun was until a year ago. <laughs> like, stop. I'm not. We're not doing this. So in Catholic schools, you're you're right. right. Like that's not it's not what right. it is. They are based right. more in reality. And oh, by the way, which is facts, ironic since facts. they're not based in reality because they're religious. It's so ironic. I forgot. That's oh, yes. right. I'm an atheist. You're a, you're a Christian. <laughs> you're, so good. you're a Christian. I'm a I'm a Catholic. Yeah. Oh, Catholic. Me I, too. I was raised Catholic. But then who was Jewish? My mother. Your mother was Jewish, but you found out late. Correct, and not until I was 13. I, I, my mother didn't go to church with us, and I was just so, I think, traumatized by the experience of having to go and catechism that I never thought, why doesn't she go? Because she just didn't always go. It's funny with kids. Like, if you don't point out something specifically, they just think that's the way it is. Moms don't go to church. <laughs> I, did, I never asked. Isn't that so funny? So you were raised... Catholic. Catholic in what way then? If you we were. went to fucking catechism in church, it was a nightmare. I'm sorry. So you went to church, but with she my didn't... father and my sister. And why didn't she go? Because so she's the Jew. We left at home. Because so it's funny. Here's something we have in common. When my parents got married, even though it wasn't an interracial marriage, it was almost as controversial. I'm sure. My mother. They got married in 1951. Same thing. Both families did not want to have anything to do with the other family. The Catholics were like, marrying a Jew? You mean the people who killed our Lord? And the Jews were like, what? <laughs> You're bringing the Goyim into... <laughs> I can't do a Jewish accent, but, but I mean, it was not considered... If you do it, that could be racist. Be careful. Yeah. 
<laughs> we know we, well, we're not the types to get into trouble, are we? Never, never, not never. Us. I used to be that person. I used to be a goody two shoes. And now that's a very, a very boring life to live. I am telling you, you, you would afford me some credibility, right? Oh, yes. I'm telling you, just talking sports is a waste of your talent. No. You, you really have to get on this tip. Well, spill the I, tea. I honestly, I honestly don't want to do just that anymore because here's the thing. I am so, this, I'm not just saying it. I was 11 years old when I told my parents I wanted to be a sportscaster. And then I got in high school and I wanted to be at ESPN. I literally achieved my childhood dream wow. and then some and did things I never dreamt of, of hosting our NBA finals or Super Bowl coverage right. and the Masters where me at the Masters and no women who look like me were at the Masters. Right. Just the name, the Masters. So <laughs> I've done things, which apparently that's okay, but fine. I, I've done things that I never, beyond what I dreamt of. And I now know that there's really nothing left. And oh, by the way, I don't work there anymore. It's over. And, you know, so I can tell you this because I've had some time now. I've been gone from ESPN for six weeks. Even though I knew it was coming, it was still traumatic almost. And there's it's been a, a lot of years, period. right? How many years? 16. 16. That's yes. a chunk. That's and I a, gave my yeah. life um, yeah, as a mother, too. And I, I, you know, I, I, but I have zero regrets and I wouldn't change a thing, even the crap. But I do know now that um, the, the ups and downs and the more recent downs prepared me in many ways for what I hope is next. And that is being the next Bill Maher and, and, and doing I'm telling you, conversations. You have to do a Because part. I'm not afraid. Like, I don't care anymore because That's, I know. You just oh, said it. Yeah, I'm not afraid. That's yeah. what I'm looking for in this casting situation. Yeah. That's it. That's what I strive to do and be. That's what I want. That's my brand. And well, you've proven that. Yes, I have. But I don't know anyone else who has. And well, no, there are people who have. Well, Go ahead. yes. I, no. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say, well. No, because it's a compliment to these people. Yes, who, it is. Who a else? I mean, I think Howard Stern okay. speaks his mind, even though I often... Not often, actually, but, you know, COVID stuff that we did disagree. But, Very much so, yeah. But I think he's, you know, a voice that matters. He does not pull a punch. Correct. Yeah, he, he just okay. doesn't care. Yeah. If we're talking about what we're talking about, which is like challenging conventional wisdom. Yes. That, the, <laughs> the field narrows. But I'm sure there are, uh, <laughs> no, there are. Let's, I'm, I have them on my show, I'm sure. I just... Um, most of the ones that I have been around aren't willing to do this. Barry Weiss yes. started a, yes. a, a... Based on what, though? Media Based company on... called Free Press, and they they are writing things that that are sound like the way we're talking. I totally agree. Like, let's just get the fucking truth out. Yes. Based let's keep on, it real. on what happened at the New York Times and, and being like me. At yes, Disney, yes. Being silenced. Yes. And it took her being beaten down to say right. enough. Right. And to write that op ed and say, I'm out and take a chance on herself. And Barry, I've yes. never met her. I hope to meet her someday. Because when I saw Barry do that, um, and it was a different situation, but when I saw that, it made me emotional, especially when I read, was it the op ed that she wrote or whatever that right. was? Because I thought, oh my gosh, that's me. Right. But then you have to actually pull the trigger when you stand up to your company. And yeah, especially that one. Devastating. Especially that company. Uh, the I Times? Mean, yes. Yes. I mean, that's a that's a behemoth to stand up against. New York Times. No, no, not yeah. Yeah, it says but she Yeah. She inspired me and not that I need No. <laughs> For me it was I had just inspiring. hit a wall of being beaten down and silenced, 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 and then made an example of when I was just being me. Oh, so I'll, they can all be themselves, but but then I, I can't. Right. And that's when at some <laughs> point you go, screw you, I'm done. And if I don't do this, not only are my three kids watching, when I preach to them about standing strong right. in their values and not hiding under the table even when it's scary, but other people and not just women, other humans, 
especially during this era, who are being forced to do things they don't want to do, whether it's to their bodies or just keeping their mouths shut because they'll get canceled and lose their job. And I thought, I'm a being, I'm being a total hypocrite if I continue to stay silent because what they did to Barry, to me, to others, Disney, is wrong. And here's the thing, just be consistent with your rules. Either you can speak your mind about things or you cannot. Right. But you can't pick and choose. And especially if your job is, you know, you're a, you're a speaker. You're, 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 if you're given the assignment of talking to the president of the United States, we assume you have thoughts. We're hiring a smart person to do this. So, yes, I mean, the idea that you can say something that is so verboten that we, we can't even tolerate hearing it. You know, we don't have to agree with it, but we, we can't even be tainted by <laughs> this idea wafting into our head. But the difference is, and I do think it's legitimate, if you are hosting your show on CNN, on Fox News, on ESPN, and you have a job as a journalist, my opinions in that moment don't matter. And I right. think that that is important. Um, my opinions were said on someone else's podcast on an off day in my own right. time. Right. And to me, that's a safe space, and apparently not. But the key was is that many of my peers were allowed to say yeah, all their opinions on our airwaves, and it was okay because it followed the, the narrative at this company. And so all I asked for, and it goes back to parenting, and it's my dad's fault, the Army, the West Point grad, where it's just about consistency. And if this is your rule, fine, you're clear with it, but you can't pick and choose. And at some point, it's so much bigger than me. Like, this is so much bigger. I'm gone now. I'm going to figure it out. But this is how millions of people feel afraid, afraid to just be themselves because it doesn't fit the narrative. Yeah. And that breaks my heart. And I feel like if I don't talk about it and have conversations with people, then shame on me because I have this platform. I don't know for how long, but it broke me for years almost. I can't even. Um, and I just, if I, if we stay silent, like, it's our own fault when this country continues to do this. We just can't afford it. Yeah, it's, it's such a Hobson's choice. I have the same thing in my life. Like, <clears throat> as long as I am going to say the things that I really think are the truth um, about whatever issue it is, I'm not going to be a person who's going to be able to live a stress-free life. Yeah, and that's okay. I accept that. Well... Yeah, I debate whether I should. <laughs> it's too late, Bill. <laughs> it is too late, exactly. It's too late. Uh, but I, I constantly say but to don't myself. don't you think you're doing such good? Yes, I do. But that's also, you know, comes with that price. I mean, I'm constantly saying to myself, boy, you know, you, you, you picked the wrong job, son, no, if, you you want, if you wanted to live a stress-free life. But don't you, th that, but what's the alternative to just. Right. There is no, there's no middle ground. The alternative is not, or, or do something trivial or retire, and then you're, you're right. It would your be voice is too, too important, little. especially now. Well, your voice is too important, and it, well, that's we would I'm, be doing a I, disservice. Well, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I really, you're not good at accepting compliments. No, I do. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> I just feel like. It. No, I mean, that's what keeps me going a lot of times is just knowing a lot of people feel that way. These right. rules? I can't. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. Um, how about this rule? That if you're black, if you have skin color like mine-ish, well, then you have to be a liberal. Right. Don't you? No. I mean, all of these rules mm. are actually racist. There is a lot of black conservatives. But They're just not allowed to be on like... No, we're not allowed mainstream sites but they have shows <clears throat> excuse me they have shows and they're good and they're funny mm -hmm. and they keep it real mm -hmm. about stuff mm -hmm. there's one the twins you ever see these two oh uh, two guys two guys yes. like <laughs> hodge the hodge twins i think that's it yes. yeah. <laughs> they're very funny they are and but god forbid there's a couple of black conservatives out there but the but the point is is that through the mainstream media and through social media, um, you are, if you're not silenced, then you're just considered completely crazy. It, I, it's just because I have certain views, I'm immediately, 
oh, she's Candace Owens. Like, you know, and be- because, you know, well, I had you Can- can't be an individual person. I had Candace Owens here. Yeah. And, you know, that's another A, B, C, D with her. I might A, B, C, and I don't agree <laughs> no with D, and E. No, don't D, and E. But it's still okay. Well, it is, but so I... We've got to talk to everybody. Yes. She's really smart. She's brilliant. She is and quick. I, I told her, I said, when you get on a subject that we agree with, I love watching you because <laughs> she puts the shiv in. Oh, she doesn't I mean, stop. She is smart and relentless. Oh. And, you know, she she wants to carve you up, <laughs> debate, and she's right. And she's got right and common sense on her side. Yeah, you don't You're want You're done. <laughs> like, yeah. you are done. Exactly. I just, I, uh, I don't really get offended by much. I really don't. I don't like that word. Everybody's offended. Right. Or something. Um, the one thing probably that it is, is somewhat offensive uh, because the hypocrisy of it is people saying that you, you have to think a certain way based on your skin color. And oh, by the way, that's coming from black people as well. It's not just white people. It's more so black people. And to me, that is, that is a bigger changing. issue. It's changing. There's, it's slow, but like, Trump's actually doing better with minorities. Black uh, unemployment was at historical lows when he was in office. Like numbers, facts. So, so yeah. there's a reason why. Yeah. There's a reason why they they like him. By the way, I, mean, I think I saw who was on, who was who would, who said this? Was this? Oh, it was Carville on your show. Okay. And I think you asked him a question about why more blacks are siding with Trump. And yeah. he gave, <laughs> I was screaming at your podcast when he said this. He said, well, I mean, think about it. If you go down to Louisiana, where he's from, right? right. And there's a black guy and he's working as a mechanic <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> scratches his ass every once in a while. And, you know, he smokes some pot. <laughs> I mean, like the examples that he flat out gave, <laughs> he's like, you know, and he sees that his paycheck's a little bit lighter, and so he's gonna like Trump. Like, thank you, James Carville, for speaking for all black men and why they're all of a sudden conservative. Are you kidding me? Like, liberal, left wing, liberal, open minded thinking Carville is saying, let me tell you why black people like Trump. Get out of my face. Like, what, what is that? Tell me how you know that. Have you, have you spoken to the guy that you just described who's the mechanic <laughs> scratching his ass? No. Like, I can't, I when people try to lump everybody together, whether it's us, whether it's Jewish people, whether it's women, whether it's gays, when you lump people together and say, this is why they do this or believe this, you are guilty of what you preach against. Mm. See, you preach so good. No, I'm mad. I was mad at Carvel for you're, that. You're, you're, really, this is your calling. Really. This is not what I ever, ever, I'll say this. I Just, never thought, I'll, first of all, I never thought Bill Maher would invite I'll, me on his show. I'll pay for the wine. I do like red wine, and I'm talking too much. I haven't drank. No, that's good. Time. That's what we want. We want people talking. I just we want to get I'm, on that level. That's yeah, realer than the next guy. But that's why you can never stop, because you've allowed people like well, me. I have to stop now. To be okay with it, <laughs> because my show's back in production. Like this is our first day back. We had a Zoom meeting. And we hadn't seen each other in six months. Oh. It was wonderful. And uh, But we're scrambling the jets to do a show on just a couple of days work time that I usually have the whole week. Oh, my gosh. So, But, uh, but you're starting off with DeSantis. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a great first That's show. good timing. Yes. Are you gonna go, you're going to go hard on him? No. No, not no, hard. No, hard in a I good mean, way, like you did Vivek. Both. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to... You know, what would I say to dissent is probably like, Governor, um, you want the part where I don't like you? <laughs> the part where I where do, do you like you? Where do you want to start? You know? Can you have Kamala on? She would never do it. She couldn't. Well, Democrats, it's so funny. Democrats should want to do my show more than Republicans, but they're the ones who are afraid. To. What does that say like to you? AOC would never do real time. That I would mean, be a waste. Kamala Harris would never do. I mean, Gavin Newsom used to do the show all the time. He's in our, um, you know, uh, 25th anniversary show. He, he was almost like a friend of the show. And then mm-hmm. governor, you know, I understand, you know, it's a why risk and, it's, you know, but 
it's the Republicans who are almost always willing to come. So that's fascinating to me. Yeah. What does that say to you about the, the liberals who won't? Because I'm, I'm surprised too. That they're um, sheepish about being um, contested about anything. They're so used to going on MSNBC where it's just roll out the red carpet and, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's just that one point of view. It's not always the wrong point of view. It's probably likely, I'm, again, old school liberal. Very often I think they have the right point of view. But the fact that it's the only point of view. Right. And that you never, you never um, just contradict or at least challenge someone. to. But I do challenge. And if I hear something that, you know, sets off my bullshit meter... <laughs> I will say it. I love it when you get hot like that. Well, they, the, <laughs> they, know, like, but they know that. I mean, I've been around a long time, you know, this tape on this. So yeah, but the Republicans know that too, but they still come on. Not all of them, but yes, many I mean, of them more. do because they are braver about it. They just fucking are, and also they're happy warriors. That was always what Republicans were: happy warriors. So, like, even if the crowd is against them, <laughs> yeah, and I'll get you, and that's the attitude, and that's the attitude <laughs> you have to have yeah. when you do stuff like The View. But don't do The View. Do Club Random. I will never step foot. And again, by the way, when right. you sue the company, they're not going to have you back on to do, to I don't know do the why show. I, <laughs> I don't know why I was trying to get you on The View when I yeah. really, when I really want, want when I really, we really want you to do this here. No, this would be, wait, yeah, this does, would, that, does, that the does that mean California? What? Does that mean California? No, no, you can do it anywhere. Because you know, your state's crazy. Well, you live in Florida? I, I'm Connecticut and Florida, but eventually all Florida. Could, yeah, we could build I, I, a Miami or a Fort Lauderdale I, I, studio I with all the colors. Um, well, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> there's only one club random. I don't no, think you right. could ever re. Uh, no, I would come but, to this. But like some, I do think that it should have the same feel. Like there's nobody else in the room. It's just us. I love it. <laughs> all right. Well, I am sure this is like the first of many. Uh, times we chat. Do you know how much this means to me? Well, that you I had me it. here. Oh, please. It is really awesome. We, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We want you. you as part of the Club Random family. Thank you. Club Random. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> what a blessing, thank you. Okay. <sighs> well, that was simple.